Welcome to Municipal Affairs, I'm Christopher Brown. Today is the final day of the Alberta Municipalities Convention and we are here. It was marked by the opening of two bear pit sessions with 15 cabinet ministers that took direct questions from municipal leaders from across the province. The entire bear pit sessions will be available on the uncut series of the show, so head over there and you can check those out. But right after the bear pit session, Tyler Gander, president of Alberta Municipalities, spoke to reporters about what the last three days was all about. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tyler Gandam, president of Alberta Municipalities. Our association represents 256 member communities of varying sizes across Alberta. More than 85% of Albertans live in our members' communities. Thank you, City of Red Deer. More than 1,000 municipal leaders from across Alberta have spent the last three days in Red Deer and I want to thank the City of Red Deer, its Council, and its employees for hosting a memorable convention and trade show. We couldn't have asked for a warmer, friendlier reception. Thank you, Red Deer, for your hospitality. You were phenomenal hosts. We hope to return in three years' time in 2027. Another year, another successful convention and trade show. I'm pleased to say this year's convention and trade show was a resounding success. Our members spent three days immersed in information, in information sessions, presentations, meetings, and networking. Yesterday, we discussed 21 resolutions that were brought forward by our members on issues that matter to them and the communities they represent. Even in the most contentious of resolutions, Debate among delegates was respectful and engaging. We also heard from Premier Danielle Smith and Alberta NDP leader Nahed Nenshi. Today we have heard from 15 provincial cabinet ministers and our members had an opportunity to ask questions. We also elected a few new board members. Our members are dealing, are dealing dozens of interrelated issues and a quick scan of the 21 or 27 resolutions we debated and voted on yesterday confirms that municipalities are dealing with a lot of interrelated issues. The resolutions reflect the complexity and the challenging nature of municipal governance in 2024, made even more complex by the fractious political environment. Here are some of the key issues that came up yesterday during our resolution sessions. Grants in place of taxes. The government of Alberta facilitates facilities and properties, provinces instead of, hmm, I'm sorry. The government of Alberta has facilities and properties all over the province. Instead of paying property tax, it gives grants to the communities in which its properties are located. These grants are then used to pay for the delivery of municipal services that government buildings require, such as roadways, water services, snow clearing, and emergency services. The same services residents pay for through their property taxes. This approach worked well until a few years ago when the provincial government gave itself a 40% cut. The costs associated with the delivery of the municipal services to provincial government properties are massive and they continue to go up. We've called on the provincial government to reverse the 40% cut in these grants so that municipalities and their residents do not have to find the money to pay for differences from their own budgets. Vote counting machines, aka tabulators, one of the things Bill 20, which passed in the legislation in the legislature earlier this year, has done is prohibit the use of vote counting machines in municipal elections. Our members have repeatedly said that the use of machines increases the accuracy of vote counting, saves money, and provides quicker election results. We are taking a science-based rational approach to the issue. Albertans trust price scanning technology when they buy their groceries, and in fact, most of us can scan our own groceries now. We believe our Albertans can have the same level of confidence in vote counting machines that use similar technology to count votes quickly, effectively, and accurately. If it's good enough for businesses, surely it's good enough for municipalities. 
We expect voters will be unhappy when they find the election results are delayed and their local government is stuck with the bill. We've called on the government of Alberta to reverse its decision to ban voting counting machines from being used in Alberta's 2025 municipal elections. Provincial underfunding of municipal infrastructure. You don't have to look very hard or far to find examples of crumbling infrastructure in Alberta communities. Cracked pavement, failed water mains, unsafe bridges. This challenge is made more difficult by the fact Alberta's population is growing rapidly. More than 200,000 people have moved to Alberta in the last year. The provincial government allocates just $722 million a year through the Local Government Fiscal Framework, LGFF, to municipalities across Alberta. It's a start, but another $1 billion a year in funding is needed. We believe more needs to be done to address the Alberta's $30 billion and growing infrastructure deficit. We've called on the Government of Alberta to allocate more LGFF funding in its 2025 provincial budget. We discussed plenty of other topics during our convention, but that gives you a sense of what our members are most interested in and concerned about. Some of you heard that yesterday, I'm sorry. So this is my first time using a teleprompter. Alberta municipalities will continue to raise issues that matter to our members. Some of you heard this yesterday, but it bears repeating and we know that many Albertans are frustrated and upset right now. There are so many social, economic and political factors affecting people's lives today. Combined, it seems that they are causing uncivil and disrespectful behaviour. Some of that is being directed toward local elected officials and government employees. Municipalities are the order of government closest to the people, so we get it. At the same time, we know Albertans can do better. AB Munis is committed to re representing the interests of its 265 member municipalities and the more than 85% of Albertans who live there. We advocate on behalf of our members to Alberta's government of the day, regardless of the political party that is in power. Alberta Municipalities is a non-partisan association will continue telling the provincial government what our members need to keep their communities thriving. We also caught up with many different municipal leaders from across the province to ask them what their big takeaways from the last three days were. Last day of Alberta municipalities, what does Alberta municipalities and what does the last three days mean for a community like yours? Well, it's been a great information session, a lot of learning, a lot of dialogue, great ne networking sessions. It's been a privilege and an honour to be here again. So what do you take back now to Alberta Beach to ensure that what happens here doesn't just stay here but actually transpose back into the municipalities that you represent? Well hopefully the they've taken back, we've all taken back some of the information and the respect dialogues. We had a great session on villages and small communities and I just hope that comes back to us. Now this is my second convention, but this is my first time that small villages, summer villages, villages, towns, played a prominent role in this uh, convention. You must be happy as the director as well of Alberta Municipalities. I am. Um, we're small but mighty. Uh, we do represent a great majority here at the convention, and that's, I think that's great. We're, we balance out with the big cities, with their powerful voices, and we come in and we collaborate wonderfully. Brian, first off, day three of Alberta Municipalities Convention here in Red Deer. What does it mean for High Prairie to have representatives here at the three-day convention? I think it's really important that we get to talk with some of the other communities, hear what's going on in the province. So yeah, I think it's good that we've got lots of representation here. And what are you taking away from this last three days as mayor of your community? Because you're going back and you got to make sure that you bring back best practices a little bit. So what are you taking away particularly? Well, there's been lots of things that I think our council can talk about and what some of the other communities are doing. Um, you know, just things like public delegations. How are you going to work with them? Um, you know, some of the grants that are available. Uh, should we be doing our own census? There's been lots of discussions on those sorts of things. 
Premier Smith and Nahid Nenshi both gave their speeches yesterday on day two of the convention. Did you hear anything from a municipal standpoint, from a northern municipality standpoint, that you were optimistic about? Um, yeah, like uh, some of the, um, they call them the navigation centers that uh, help with the mental health and addictions. That's one of the things that, uh, you know, we did meet with the minister and they were talking about that. So, yeah, that's the one thing that I, we're hoping to get into our community. Mayor Potter, last day of Alberta Municipalities. What's it feel like to be here and what did you take away from the last three days? It's been a really good experience, like always. we uh, I love getting together with my colleagues from across the province and learning from them and, yeah, getting more information, more education, and hopefully a lot of fun too. It's been a really good week. I think my biggest takeaway um, was from Mayor Richard Ireland from Jasper, uh, listening to him speak. And one of the things that he said about communication which I think will stick with me is that communication is about um, having an authentic voice sharing real content but with empathy so then it doesn't matter if it's crisis or if it's everyday life you can still connect with the people around you and so that's a that's my number one takeaway so these are these type of conventions are not cheap and that means when you go back you have to bring back something tangible what's that action item that you're going to be able to take from these last three days and bring it back to sex smith and say here's what we can best practice so i think again on the communication piece being a small town we don't have a communications department we don't have a lot of staff but there are small things that we can do and and i love the practical pieces that we can walk away with so small things that we can do to actually engage with our residents one of the one of the items is is being able to go to where the residents are not just expecting them to come to our Facebook page come to our website we have to actually go where they are and say here's what's happening we want you to engage with us more and so so for me the communication side lots of takeaways lots of things hopefully you'll see in Sexsmith in the near future Councillor, last day of Alberta Municipalities, what does it mean for you to be here and taking in the events and the policy resolutions? I have loved being here this time. Uh, Red Deer has been amazing. I feel the uh, resolutions were really engaging and some good debate. Um, the sessions have been really good. I th love the whole time. What do you now take away from this last three days to bring back to Wembley? Because it, it's pretty expensive to come, so you got to make sure that you there's some best practices brought back. So for you, what are you hoping to bring back? So this will be interesting, in my opinion. Um, this year we decided, after looking at our budget, we had decided that we weren't going to do any conferences. We weren't going to do any travel as a council. Uh, what I, uh, I am here today because I won a, an award. So they sent me, and I'm the only one who's done any traveling. So, But what I've learned is the importance of going to something like this. It is huge, the connections, the education, the being able to vote on really important things. It is huge for us to have a voice here, and if at all possible, I think that's a really important thing for our council to relook at, revisit. So congratulations on the award. So how does it feel to be nominated and then receive the award? It was awesome, and I really appreciate Councillor Ketchum and on town of Wembley for uh, nominating uh, me so it was really neat yeah mayor thank you so much for doing this um, last day of Alberta municipalities convention what does it mean for a town like Edson to be here at this three-day convention you know it's fantastic we're able to connect with different municipalities leaders from across the province where we wouldn't have the opportunity to do that and just talk about ideas and talk about solutions to problems that every community is facing it doesn't matter if it's social issues like homelessness or infrastructure uh, we're all facing the same challenges and some folks out there have some really great ideas and we hope to learn from that and make our own plans uh, based on that information. Now an event like this doesn't is not cheap so there has to be some best practices brought back. What's the one thing that you're taking away from this week that you can bring back to Edson and implement or even start the conversation about implementation? Well you know we've been talking uh, our community is impacted by homelessness and I understand uh, some communities out there have some things that they're trying out so we're gonna be keeping an eye on that and see if there's something there that we can use uh, moving forward in order to address issues in our community um, and it's it's a great opportunity also to connect with government ministers and get some some of our issues front and center with them um, and we we really enjoy coming to the conference every year 
Mayor Elbers, yes, we're Mayor Elbers, uh, last day of Alberta municipalities. What did you take away from the three-day event? Well, certainly I see uh, you see a united group of leaders from across Alberta, large and small, from the largest cities down to the summer villages, facing some of the challenges, right? Uh, you know, crime, uh, mental health and addiction, uh, homelessness is prevalent in so many places and talking to some of the other mayors, they're saying, boy, all of a sudden we're feeling what you guys are feeling as a mid-sized city. So so that's really important. I think that uh, you know we're, we're, what we're going to see with the bear pit coming up shortly, I think you're going to see those questions focused to the government saying, these are our issues. What are you doing and what are you planning to do to deal with it? Now, what do you do as mayor when you get back to uh, Lloyd Minster to ensure that the last three days isn't just a vanity project for municipalities, but it's the tangible actions that are going to take place in your community? Well, for ourselves, because we are going into a municipal election because of our uniqueness of Lloyd Minster being uh, a part of Saskatchewan, part of Alberta, some notes that we took away from understanding the governance and how important that is, especially with potentially having new people on council, having that relationship with administration and council because it's often easy to come into this business saying I'm going to fix the world as a newly elected official but in the same token we have responsibilities to understand learn as well as help provide direction and that governance so that's that's one that I really came away with from yesterday uh, just the conversations knowing that we're all in the same fishbowl together may not be the best description but we're facing the same challenges so being able to lean on fellow municipal leaders and ask for their support ask for their input what have you done that we haven't done and what's worked for you and what hasn't I think that's critical because there's no use reinventing the wheel time after time. Reeve thank you so much for doing this this is the third day of Alberta municipalities as a rural delegate why did you decide to come to this convention? Um, it, it is an opportunity for rurals to network with the urbans and, and hear what it's important and it's on top of mind of the urban municipalities and because we don't necessarily get to share our challenges and so I'm, I'm always looking forward to these conferences. Did you get a sense that the issues that are in the rural areas are similar to what's going on uh, urbanly? In the sense where we're collaborating uh, on regional aspects such as uh, well the hot topic right now is in, in regards to health so which does impact both the rural and the urban centers and so, especially the remote end of things. So, yes, the the sense that we share that common frustration, that common, uh, you know, let's find some answers and solutions quickly. Now, what do you do after you leave this uh, convention? Because I know RMA is coming up in November in Edmonton, but what do you take from this that you can go back and bring into best practices for the beautiful Clearwater County? Um, I know for myself, it's going to be able to uh, bring the... Uh, collaboration with uh, Rocky Mountain House because that's who's our urban and finds that uh, solution at the table to say we need a, an answer sooner than later and uh, lobby on behalf of our residents that uh, you know th things that are working and things that aren't so our May's coming up and I totally am looking forward to uh, quizzing our cabinet ministers into you know what's coming up because it is budget time and and we want to know where the money's being allocated now be sure to tune in next week for all brand new episodes of Municipal Affairs. We have comprehensive coverage of the resolutions and also some other things that were going on at the convention that we want to bring you live. So tune in next week to the Municipal Affairs. Until then, just keep talking.